In this tutorial, I'll be providing a brief overview of the Zinc 4 general user interface and familiarizing you with both the layout and the most commonly used features of the interface. The first thing we need to do is select a Flash Swift project to be the base movie in our Zinc application. Uh, in the upper left hand corner, you'll see this project pane. From here, we can select a Swift movie. In this case, I'm going to select uh, the Flash version of an arcade classic, Asteroids. So the first thing you'll see is that the central area of the interface is dominated by a WYSIWYG window. This provides a visual preview of how our application will look on the target platform. In this case, it's defaulted to how it will look on a Mac OS X system because we're working on a Mac. But we can just as easily cycle through how it will look on Linux and also on Windows. You'll notice also that the window Chrome uh, changes in appearance to reflect the platform. So from the WYSIWYG window, we can choose uh, from desktop view, which is what it's set to currently. Uh, we can also toggle to an application view. This just simply zooms in and displays the application as it will appear at movie size. Uh, toggle back to desktop and we can set things such as the position on the screen. Um, and we can also, if we move over to the Windows properties pane, check or uncheck the movie size button. It's currently checked. What that means is that it will be faithful. The application that we that we create will be faithful to the Flash Movie X, sorry, the width and height uh, movie size. If we uncheck that, we can grab any one of these corner handles and resize the application to any custom size and dimensions. You'll notice that as I'm scaling it, the actual flash content keeps the aspect ratio. If that's not what you desire, we can go back to the window of properties and uncheck keep aspect ratio, and you'll see that it's now stretching to fill the available space. Again, this is a, a very simple but powerful feature of Zinc, which allows a great flexibility in how your application is going to appear on screen. Set this back to movie size, and we'll also Sentry on the desktop. Now, the interface for Zinc 4 uh, is made up primarily of application settings and window settings. The difference between the two is that application settings, which is hosted on the left hand side here, hosts all of the options which apply to the complete application. Windows properties, on the other hand, can be individual properties applied to each form in your application. With Zinc 4, you can select more than one form in your application. So there'll, there will always be a main form, which is the first Swift that you select. So you can see that is highlighted here. Uh, if I go to our project pane again, you'll notice that this project uh, directory has been created. This is simply the root directory of the Flash movie that we selected, in this case, Asteroids. So any other files which are available in the Asteroids home directory will also be listed here. So if we want to create second form or third form with separate Swift files. We just put the Swift files into this directory and they will also be available here for us to use. Uh, for the purpose of this demonstration I'll just select, uh, I'll just create a new subform and we won't select a Swift file but this is where you would normally select any other files on the project pane. And you'll notice this window is now completely independent to the main form. So this could for example be a tool window for preferences for any other options that we want to add later, we can put it in any corner or any location on the desktop. Uh, and if I flick back to my main form, you'll notice that this is exactly where we left it before. That's because the window properties on the right hand side apply only to this specific form. I click back to subform one. Again, you'll notice that the window properties have now been updated to reflect the options for this subform. So that's the difference between window properties on the right side and application properties on this, on this left side which apply to the entire application. Let's go ahead and remove this form. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of the application properties that we can apply. Um, moving down the list, you'll see that the application options are all to do with branding and numbering your application. So for example it contains a lot of options 
whereby you can contain information in your application such as build version, copyright notices, description, legal trademarks, etc. You'll also notice that you have the ability to pack different Flash players, in this case Flash 10 or Flash 11. Uh, generally speaking, with Zinc, with every new version of Zinc, we tend to release with the most up-to-date and latest version of the Flash player, but we always provide a legacy version for all the projects, just in case certain options or new features don't work out on older projects. So this is defaulted to Flash 10, but you could just as easily select Flash 11, and that will pack the absolute latest Flash 11 um, release player. You'll notice also there's a show splash screen. This is a great feature whereby you can select any bitmap image to display as a splash screen for your application before the application actually loads. It's a great way to add a great professional look and feel to your application. And we also have a built-in trial limitation. So you can select from a time limit, a date limit, or a number of uses limit. Again, this is a very, very powerful feature straight out of the box, which allows your Zinc projects, Zinc applications, to have trial functionality from the get-go. It requires very little programming, and the options are very flexible. And across the bottom of the, of, of the Zinc interface, you'll notice there's a few tabs here as well. Uh, the first is simply an output log, um, which I'll show you in a second. There's also the files tab, which allows you to pack external files into your application. Again, this is a great way to hide certain files from the end user. They get packed into the actual application, and they can be extracted and used, implemented, loaded, whatever the case may be, during the runtime of the application. Plugins simply lists the platform Zinc 4 platform plugins, which are in currently installed. You'll notice that we have two trial plugins installed and one commercial plugin. The extensions are all of the command modules which make up the Zinc API. So as I move down the list, you can see that everything is broken down into its own class. Uh, this is a great way to only pack in the classes that you require for your specific application. It saves on both disk space and also in memory usage during the, during the runtime. Global VARs and secure VARs are very similar in nature. Uh, these are variables which can be uh, included into the into the Zinc wrapper itself, so they're not actually available in the Flash movie until a specific request for them is made. Global VARs um, are simply available to at any point in the movie, uh, whereas secure VARs are encrypted and, as the name suggests, uh, are secure against hackers and uh, decompilers and the like. Uh, so it's a great way to save things like FTP passwords or any kind of passwords or sensitive data that you want to later request during the runtime of your projector. So we can go right ahead and click on the build button in this case. And click on build. And you'll notice the log uh, here now fills it with information. Any error messages, any errors during the build process will also be displayed there. And here's our application. Uh, Asteroids, made in Flash, compiled into a completely standalone desktop application for Mac OS X with Zinc 4.